Hi there, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you how to use and activate uh, Nanite and Lumen over here in Unreal Engine 5. So um, first things first, I want to talk about how not to use those um, because Unreal Engine 5, um, if you notice and you come from Unreal Engine 4, is way heavier than, uh, you know, is more heavier than Unreal Engine 4. So Unreal Engine 5 kind of um, has some features enabled that impact performance a lot and it, it's not explained anywhere as far as I know. Um, but those things are, well, first of all, we need to go into our project settings to see those. So let's go into our project settings and I'm going to show you how you can reset back um, basically the rendering system to be uh, closer to Unreal Engine 5, or uh, Unreal Engine 4, sorry. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, let's search for Lumen. And you can see that by default, things will come with um, uh, with Lumen enabled. So what you want to do is actually do none. So it resets back to the default Dynamics shadows that um, come on Unreal Engine 4. And then you have over here uh, Software Ray Tracing mode. And you have Detail Tracing, which is, uh, if you read it, when using Software Ray Tracing, Lumen will trace against individual meshes. Uh, for highest quality. Cost can be high in scenes with many overlapping instances. So what this means is this is going to show you more detailed shadows but it's going to be much more expensive and this comes enabled by default. And then you have global tracing. When using software ray tracing Lumen will trace against the global distance field for fastest traces. So this will basically do uh, a more low poly uh, version of the detail tracing. So depending on your hardware and your, you know, if you want to people to use this with low end machines or medium low end, uh, you might want to enable global tracing. I'm gonna leave it detail tracing for now um, because you know my PC can handle it and I want to show Lumen, uh, you know, on its highest quality. And but there's another setting that I don't remember exactly the name, but I think it's called uh, virtual something. Oh, there you go, uh, shadow maps method. Now it comes enabled with virtual shadow maps beta. Now this is a um, render geometry into virtualized shadow depth maps for shadowing, provides high quality shadows for next gen, blah, blah, blah. High efficiency culling when used with Nanite. The system is in development and does a number of performance pitfalls. So this is the main reason that the performance is so bad in Unreal Engine 5 compared to 4. Now you need to do normal shadow maps. Um, if you want, uh, you know, if you want to have good performance, but now obviously this will be incompatible with Nanite geometry. Now, if you want to use Nanite, you need to have this enabled. Obviously, I think the performance will become better, uh, you know, once the engine comes out fully. But right now, uh, it it's it really really hurts. So if you're working on a project on Unreal Engine 5 and you don't need Nanite right away, make sure that you set this back to Shadow Map so you can see the preview of the dynamic light, but you're not actually getting it with that much performance impact because it's unrealistic to be, uh, you know, working with this in terms of performance because I believe this will get better, of course. Uh, but you know, again, I want to show off Nanite, so I'm not gonna toggle this. But if you want, click over there, and I don't think you need. I think you need to restart the other. It doesn't ask you, but you need to do that. And then I'm going to click there. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah. So, but as you saw, I disabled Lumen over here in the default. Um, it actually doesn't appear anymore because uh, the option is no longer Lumen. But we're going to activate that another way. So right now, uh, if I go over here, um, Let's see. Well, I'm just going to change a little bit of the geometry over here so I can show you uh, Lumen. And one thing that is very um, important is that you need mesh distance fields for this to work. And the thing is, uh, you might be want to pick up this mesh over here and basically, you know, duplicate it and then scale it to make like a, seal, a ceiling. The reason is, uh, or the problem is, is that scaled meshes, as you can see over here, uh, sometimes they don't generate their distance maps... Um, or the um, yeah the like the the mesh uh, low poly version that is used to calculate with lumen when it's scaled it doesn't um, calculate those correctly so lumen might be a little bit uh, buggy if you are previewing shadows from a scaled mesh now I'm not sure if this is going to happen with a simple mesh like um you know like this. But if that happens, it's uh, certainly the problem. But I'm going to try it either way and we'll see. So I'm going to basically create like a ceiling. So it prevents light from coming in over here. And you can see, uh, well, a little bit right now. 
that uh, you know there's a lot of light in here. So let's go into our post process over here, and first of all, let's check for um, lumen. It should be over here. There you go. So you can see that the method by default is lumen. Uh, well, it's not because in the project defaults we disable that, but if you toggle this, it's going to activate lumen. And now you can see how um, lumen actually works. So you can see that the sky or the light from the sky is actually coming in and it's giving you a nice gradient of uh, skylight going into over here, but it's very dark. And if you pick up your ceiling and move it, it will adjust and it will, it will start giving uh, you know that light further and further inside as you move the ceiling. You can see the reflections on the character. As the shadow approaches it, it becomes more light. So that's basically what Lumen does. Um, obviously right now it's super dark, but if I basically change this around like that, it should help a little bit more. Let me make sure that I refresh. But you can see that the difference, well, it's not really that big. It's not affecting as much. Uh, yeah, and it's actually a little bit worse because now light is not actually reflecting from this wall over here. It's just trying to reflect from the ground to the ceiling. Obviously, the distance is way bigger. So if we actually rotate it to the side, the reflection from this wall would actually help the light bounce off. And that's how basically the um, lumen works. But now you can see that... The light is kind of dead, you know, it's not very strong, but if you click on your light source and you change, uh, now on Unreal Engine 4 without Lumen, this indirect lightning intensity actually doesn't do anything because, you know, it's, um, well, it might do in baked lightning, but not in dynamic lightning. But now if you do this with Lumen, you can see as I increase this, you can see the light will reflect more and more. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm able to go past this value. There you go, I am. Uh, but you can see that that will create artifacts. Now, I'm not sure. Well, it's not even that bad, but um, I'm not sure if this is going to be fixed in the future or if the light will be able to reflect much higher without creating artifacts. But right now, you can see that as you increase this value, now you can see that you can actually see inside pretty well. Um, but yeah, let's go back to the maximum that this allows, which is 6. And you can see, even with that, we got a pretty nice fade uh, fade in. I'm not sure if we YouTube compression, you can see this, but if you're doing this on your end, you can see that you can actually see the corners, um, although it's very dark, you can actually see it. And you can see the character relatively well because the light reflects on its surface. And you can actually see a bit of a reflection on the back, although it's very dark. And that's how basically... Uh, Lumen works overall. Now I've showed you the settings and I showed you how to make it reflect more. And you also have an option over here if we go back there, um, which is the final gather uh, quality. And if you put this to two, well, you might not see much difference on the editor, but if you're actually on a package build, this, this might actually make a good difference. But you can see that it will reflect more as you put this to you. Um, less and more. And the artifacts will actually reduce with this, but obviously it's heavier on the CPU. And you can actually do the reflections, um, also lumen. And I'm not sure if this changes. Oh, sorry. I want to do this one. Yeah, you can see that the reflections on the character actually change if I toggle this. So the reflections on the character are actually more realistic uh, with lumen. And you, again, you can change the quality to two if you want. Uh, so it's better. And obviously you should want to disable screen space reflections actually it might help uh, so yeah leave it on I'm not sure if Lumen already does screen space re reflection but I'll leave it at default I don't want to cause any problems there but yeah that's how you use Lumen basically um, do I want to show you anything else um, yeah uh, let me just check do I have a skylight yeah I do now you can see that the skylight kind of stopped working with this uh, let me try and increase its intensity. There you go. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there you go. If you get to like to two or to three to four, uh, with Lumen activated, the skylight I think um, has different calculations. But if you want dark areas to be a little bit lighter, you might want to increase this value, um, and that will help, as you can see. You know, this looks decently enough. It has some artifacts over here. Uh, but that's because we increase the indirect lightning, and that obviously causes artifacts. But it's pretty good. Um, yeah, and I think that's it.
Uh, if you guys have any questions, of course, uh, you can ask in the comments and I will respond. If it's anything like very specific, I might know so I can answer. If I don't, I'll try to investigate a bit and get back to you. But now let's go back to or go into um, Nanite. And what is Nanite? Well, Nanite is basically a way for um, substitute the LODs on static meshes. So instead of using uh, the classic uh, LODs, so if I go into this cube and open that up, you can see over here that we have um, LODs. There you go, over here. Right now there's no LODs, there's just auto, but you can create more LODs if you change it over here. Now if you activate Nanite, it will automatically calculate... Sorry about that. There you go. Um, it will automatically calculate the, the LODs as you move with the camera. So it's kind of automatic. And um, it will also calculate like the, the UVs, not the UVs, but like the, the UV scaling and everything like that. So as you go far away with the camera, the, the quality of the, the static mesh will reduce uh, to the actually using pixels. So for example, if I'm over here, it's only using like 100 pixels. So I don't need really detail on this mesh. So the game will automatically reduce its quality. As I get closer, it will improve the quality because now it's occupying more pixels in my screen. And that's how basically how Nanite works. But again, how do you activate that? Well, if you want to activate something for a particular mesh, you can right click on it, go into Nanite and click Enable. And that will be like a quick refresh of the, the item and it will work. Um, but how do you know? There's not really a big difference and you won't notice a difference basically if it, the, the things are already low poly and it's not very clustered. Uh, you won't see really an impact, but you can see it if you go into, I think it's Nanite Visualization over here and go into Mask. There you go. You can see whatever is Nanite is green and whatever everything else is uh, red. And there's a, a couple more tools that you can see over here, uh, which is a triangles, for example. And I'm not sure if I can see these triangles change. Oh, now I can see anything. There you go. There you go. You can see that the triangles change colors as you go away. Um, yeah. So that's basically the way for you to know if Nanat is actually working. Now, I don't think it does much if the thing is already low poly, as like as a cube does, but if you like go into mega scans and pick up a mesh like with a million polys, you're going to see a lot of difference with activating Nanite because it will basically make meshes um, the same weight uh, in your GPU independently of the number of polys that they have. At least that's the, the idea. So, you know, having to worry about the polys on your scenes will kind of be obsolete. Although it is good practice to keep doing low poly stuff because Nanite, although it's very low cost, it does have a cost. So, you know, if you have like 3 billion or 3 trillion of polys on your scene, obviously it's going to be uh, worse than having, you know, just 2 million polys. Uh, even if you have Nanite uh, toggled on, but it will help a lot. Uh, let me go, if I go to light map UVs, I don't think that's going to change anything, but yeah. Um, this is the tools. With more complex meshes, you can see differences over here and you can explore this. Uh, I'm just going to go into lit. There you go. Um, now, the thing with Nanite, it doesn't have many options right now, as far as I know. Uh, let me actually go into the project settings and check, but the only thing right now with Nanite is that it's only compatible with static meshes. So you can do characters, you can do foliage that has movement, for example, wind. Um, so anything with a material plug then in like the pin with the world offset, uh, which is normally done for like wind or like move the, the polys of the mesh individually in the material, um, that will break uh, Nanite, it won't work. Uh, so it only works with pure static meshes that do not change at all, like a cube. Um, if you try to do it in a character or in like foliage that moves, it's going to break. And that's just a problem with, you know, I don't think they have gone that far yet. Um, they do say that they want to do that. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any options for Nanite. There's probably like um, commands that I'm not aware of, but you know, as far as these things are going to work, it's going to be like this. Right now, there's not many second settings for you to change. Um, as well I was saying, uh, I think that they will add in uh, character support and foliage with wind effect and stuff later on. But right now, this is what we have. 
Um, it works very well. Uh, if you use General Engine 5 and you'll, um, I showed you why to make the performance better. Right now, Lumen is heavy. If you try to open Lumen in, you know, a full length landscape map with like a lot of trees and stuff like that, it's going to put your performance very down. Like it's going more than half your performance. So it's not really usable right now for large scenes, but I hope that they pr uh, improve their performance for open world games. And I think that's what they're trying to do. But for like for small, you know, places like, you know, this area like this or like a small building or stuff like that, if you activate Lumen, uh, it's actually going to improve uh, the quality of it and it's going to give you real-time reflections if you want to move the meshes around in real time. So, you know, for a presentations of like... Uh, architectural visualization and stuff it's going to be like gold for people that want to do that but you know for games it's a bit heavy right now but the tools are amazing and you know they're going to change the game literally um so yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this um i know it's not very in-depth but it shows um how to toggle them completely off make your performance good and i show you how to use them and how to toggle them a little bit in terms of quality um yeah so if you guys have any questions or if I missed something that you guys know, please let me know in the comments or if you have any doubts, I will respond. And yeah, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.